Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Honkai Star Rail and we are coming at you with a beginner's tips and tricks guide for anyone who is just starting off their trailblazing experience. So with that being said, these are the top things I think that every person who plays this game should know right from the get-go. First things first, you do not need to spend money on this game. You do not need to spend your actual real life money in order to enjoy this game to the fullest. The game will give you a lot of free resources, including your free initial roster character list. They're actually pretty good and you can get by pretty far with them. So the initial character list is good. The second thing is that you will get a lot of free resources as long as you persevere, continue to play the game, because as you play it over and over, you'll get the credits you'll need, you'll get star rail passes. So as you persevere through those initial stages, you will get those resources passively and we'll, we will be going through a list of all the free resources that you can get from playing this game. Now I get it, you want to spend because you really want that one character, you really want to make sure you get this one resource, totally understandable, I get it, I've been there before. Um, there are two things I recommend if you are going to spend real life money on this game. First things first, if you go to the store, I recommend getting the Express Supply Pass. Now, this is just a daily, you log in, and then you get the jades, which are necessary to summon for characters, and you do this every single day for 30 days, and you'll end up with a total of 2,700 stellar jades and 300 oneric shards. Now, these oneric shards can either be transformed into jades, or if it's anything like Genshin is, you'll use them to buy character costumes down the line. So I recommend getting this every month, because all you gotta do is buy it, Hop in the game, boom, collect it, and then you can hop off and do something else in case you're busy or you're in the middle of something. So it's a nice, easy way to get 90 jades instantly. The next thing I recommend is if you want to spend a little bit more money than that, once you unlock the Nameless Honor, first of all, you get the Nameless Gift for free. And as you can see, there's a lot of resources you get just from leveling up your Nameless Gift. But below that is the Nameless Glory, which as you can see, comes with a lot of better resources so for example at level 10 with the nameless gift you get just a regular star rail pass which is for the permanent banner but with the nameless glory at level 10 you get the star rail special pass which is used to summon those limited time only characters so as you play the game more you obtain these levels as you can see you get a lot of resources with that second tier nameless glory as opposed to the nameless gift even right here this is four times the amount so you will be getting at level 29 if you unlock this you'll be getting 20 of these which is really really good the way to unlock it is down here on the unlock nameless glory you'll just pay 10 us dollars right here i don't really recommend getting this because this is really just for flair more so it doesn't in my opinion help you accelerate your game 200 jades is whatever because you can get that real fast and then fuel is again whatever i really don't think that these justify the additional 10 dollars. so i wouldn't spend money on this but i would spend money on the nameless glory and the express supply pass the next thing I recommend is that if you really want to play this game free to play or if you want to get your game started on the right foot, re-roll. Um, what that means is that you will play the game and then during those initial stages they'll throw a lot of rail passes at you, lots of resources at you, you'll get a lot of initial starting jades, um, and then you'll do all your warps with them and see if you get a character you like or at the very least like a 5 star because that one 5 star can carry you a very, very long way. So for example, in my teams here, I was lucky on my first go through to get Bronya and Bronya is in my opinion a really broken character for reasons I'm not going to get into in this video but basically I plan on using her all the way until I can get either more five stars or until there's a character that I like that I wanted to save all my resources for. So a good example of this is in Genshin I got Jean on day one. Jean was my first five star character and she carried me all the way until February four months later when I got my second 5 star. So one 5 star in a game like this can get you very, very far on top of the free characters that the game gives you like Herta, like Asta, Dan, and March. So you get a lot of good characters right off the bat, but if you want to reroll, get that one character that you want to carry you all the way as you accumulate these resources, as you get those extra rail passes, you can re-roll. Um, now, I don't recommend re-rolling if you think it's a waste of time, because you really can get by with just the 4-star character rosters that they give you for free. If I remember correctly, all of these 4-stars are free to some degree. This was like, I think, a pre-registration bonus. Um, you get her from the story. I think down the line you get Natasha. These are really the only 4-stars that I had to actually summon or use warps for. So the game is very generous when it comes to giving you an initial starting roster that's 
that's actually really useful. Um, so the next tip that I have for you is to make sure you check the tier list page. So if you're anything like me, and you sort of don't know what you're doing a lot of the time, I'll be honest, I'm not really good at MiHoYo games, but there are people out there who are. So if you want to hop into that, uh, let's go ahead and go here. So the title of the webpage is misleading. It says GenshinLab.com Honkai Star Rail tier list. Um, this is a good way of just banking off the experience of others and kind of learning what makes things good. So for example, these are the SS tier characters, the ones that you want to be getting in your roles. And then these are the C tier characters who you hope you never have to see. Or if you need to fill an element, they're your last resort. So you can bank off the experiences of others and kind of click away and see what makes these characters broken. So for example, Let's look at the page for Bronya, who is an SS tier character. It gives you all the attacks, the skills, the ultimates. It gives you like a breakdown of what all the Adolans do. It gives you the best light cones based on the character stats. And then it also at the very bottom gives you a good team comp. So as you're learning this game more and more, you'll kind of learn what makes these characters good. So for example, Bronya support. Bronya has a valuable skill set that enhances the performance of her team members in battle. She is capable of increasing the attack percent of all team members, etc, etc. Basically, you can use this page to kind of figure out what makes characters good and what makes them particularly valuable. And I believe this is going to get progressively updated as time goes on. So you can just keep updating this page, seeing what's good, who is good, if someone's worth pulling for, whatnot. So I recommend checking out that page from time to time to make sure you know who is a good character. Another thing I recommend is do not spend your Stellar Jade on the regular Star Rail Passes. That is these gray ones right here. Never, never, never spend these on this. And the reason I say this is because the game will give you these over time. You will get them through leveling, you will get them through events, you will get them from simply leveling up your characters. So these are very, 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 very easy to get in comparison to the much rarer twin brother of it, which are going to be the Star Rail Special Passes. The Star Rail Special Passes are only offered through very limited time events or through things like anniversaries, game launches, so these are a lot harder to come by in comparison to the regular Grey Star Rail Pass. So never spend your Stellar Jade on the plain star rail pass do spend your seller jade on the star rail special pass these special passes are really good because the characters featured in these banners are number one limited they will go away after enough time has passed and number two the characters in these banners tend to be kind of busted in comparison to some of the more permanent characters that you can always get so this is always available these are easier to get i don't recommend spending your stellar jades on these gray passes i recommend spending them on these gold passes or saving them until there is someone in this gold pass that you really really want to get so never spend your stellar jade on regular star rail passes all right moving on Another tip I have for everyone is if you go to the store every single month, you're going to want to go to this embers exchange page. You get these embers by just simply pulling. So you'll get them and accumulate them over time and you'll want to collect all the gold things. So here you have the star rail special pass and the regular star rail pass that you get at a discounted rate of 90 versus 160. You can get five of each of these a month, meaning that in two months you get a guaranteed 10 pull just by buying these. And then this too, also buy this because this is very important for character leveling, but these are going to be where most of your embers are going to be going. So get about 900 of these undying embers a month and use them for these because it's a good way to get these star rail passes for cheap and again without having to spend a real life currency and like i was saying earlier these are really hard to come by so make sure you collect these every single month so now we're going to go over all the various resources that the game gives you free resources through first things first is going to be the redemption codes so whenever they have streams whenever they have launch events whenever they have kind of just special things going on there will always be a code to redeem 
Now the game just started and they did launch some initial redemption codes. So let's go ahead and pop those up on our screen here. These are going to be the rail codes, or I'm sorry, the redemption codes that they gave for just the opening of the game. So go ahead and type those into your redemption code section and get some free resources. So check in from time to time on discords or on the Twitter page or see the live streams and try and collect as many redemption codes as possible. The next thing that they do to give you free stuff is an achievements page. So as you play the game, you'll unlock achievements. So all these are in progress for me, but I did complete a few of them. And these achievements will give you the Stellar Jades, which again are used to get the rail passes or to summon characters. There's a lot of things in here. There's a lot of free Jade. So if you're willing to dedicate the time, you could probably get a few extra pulls just by doing the achievements alone. Uh, the next thing I recommend is checking out the travel log. So in the main menu, there's the travel log and it shows you everything that's kind of just going on in game at the moment. So for example, we've got the current event, A World Beyond, where you can get 10 free special passes just by logging in seven days. Um, I don't believe you have to do them seven days in a row. I think it could just be seven days. So let's say you skip a day, you're on vacation, whatnot. As long as this is still active, you can still collect these. So check these all out. Just make sure you try and get them all done as much as possible, and you'll get just free stuff. You'll get a free Natasha, you get a free Herta. Um, if you try out the character with the Star Trial, you get some free Jades and resources. For each individual character, you'll get some free resources. Simulated World, again, there's a Herta store where you can get some stuff. So basically, go through your travel log. Make sure you do as much as possible, because that's how you're going to get some additional free stuff without spending any money. Another way to get free stuff is check your mail. Check your mail every single day because they will always throw good things at you for someone's birthday, for a launch event. So for example, recently they gave us the departure thank you gift, which gave us 10 additional Star Rail special passes. And again, these are hard to come by. Mail also expires. So if you do not collect the mail after a certain amount of time, it goes away. So don't think you can just log in one day, not play for 50 days, and then come back and all your mail is still there. So make sure to hop in this every single day, collect your free mail, and get your free stuff. The next thing is to do the inter-astral guide. So it's pretty much the dailies where you will have to do some of these missions and get up to 500 points. There are 800 points worth of stuff here, so you don't even have to do all of them. Just get to 500 because there are rewards every 100 points you get. And one of the best rewards is going to be these Stellar Jades, which again are for characters. And then these trailblazing experiences, which are a lot harder to come by. You can't pay for these unless you want to spend a lot of energy, um, which is not a good way to spend your jade. But basically, it's a nice way of getting free stuff just by playing the game. I'd say on average, it takes no more than about 15 minutes to do all of this stuff in a day. Next thing I recommend to get free stuff is level up your characters. So once you reach level 15, you can ascend your characters. And then as you ascend them past level 20, past level 30, you'll always get these additional rewards, these ascension rewards, which are star rail passes. So every 20 levels nets you an additional pass. So if you level up four characters to level 60, you've got 12 passes. That's a free summon right there. So leveling up your characters is a good way just to get extra star rail passes even if you don't plan on playing the character you can still level them up to get a free star rail pass so that's a nice way to getting uh free stuff in this game another thing is level rewards so if you go to the ship and you speak to pom pom and you check the trailblaze level you all have all these rewards to collect as you level up which can include things like the star rail special pass or i'm sorry the star rail pass i don't know if you can get star rail special passes through here um i haven't gotten that far in the game but it's another way oh no these are not these are not special passes but it's another way of just getting free stuff in game without actually having to spend any money we talked about this a little bit earlier but doing the nameless honor so by doing these things in the second tab like consume 150 trailblaze power dispatch one assignment you level up your nameless gift and if you bought it the nameless glory and you get all these things so Keep logging in every day, every week, play a little bit every single time, knock out some of these tasks, and get these free rewards that are present on the Nameless Gift and the Nameless Glory. It's a good passive way of being rewarded simply for playing the game. The next thing is to do the simulated world score points. So if we go to, I believe it's this one here. 
So once you get to a certain point, there is the simulated universe that you hop, have to hop into. You clear the worlds, you get these points, and then you can get some free stuff like Star Rail Passes. You can get the Tracks of Destiny. So by doing this, you get, again, just free stuff just for playing the game. The last thing, and this one's a little bit more niche to know, is to hop on the daily check-in page. So if we go to here... Now, I just uploaded the screenshot on a paint screen tab, but there is a daily check-in where pretty much you just hop into the website, you click the reward, and you get it for free. And as you can see, there are credits in there, there are jades in there, so it's a nice, very quick way of getting additional resources. So those were a lot of different ways you can get free resources in the game. Just to kind of help summarize everything here, these are all the things that I talked about that get you free things in this game, whether they be rail passes, credits, level up material. So make sure you do these as much as possible because this is how you get the most out of an even free to play experience. Another thing I recommend, and this is not really something that uh, I am showing by example right now, is to use all of your trailblazing power. That's this stuff right here. Once you get to a certain point in the game, you are going to be able to do these calyxes. I think they're called calyxes, where you spend these, and then in return you get good resources like adventure logs for leveling characters, credits, the condensed aether, and then of course the trailblazing experience, which is the easiest way to get the trailblazing experience. So make sure this is as at zero as much as possible because this regenerates over time. So while this regenerates, once it hits 180, it doesn't go past that. So you want to make sure this is empty as much as possible to make sure you can collect as many of these trailblazing experiences as possible. Another thing you can do to get some free stuff in this game is go to your notices and then complete surveys. From time to time, this game is going to throw surveys at you, just kind of asking questions like, How's your game experience? What games have you played before? What did you think of this event? And then for that, you're usually rewarded with Stellar Jades, which again is free. You didn't have to spend a single dollar, you just kind of had to give the game your opinion. Another thing you can do to get free stuff is do assignments. So once you get to a certain point in the game, you can do these assignments and you could send off characters for anywhere between 4 to 20 hours. I like doing the 20 hours because I don't like logging in all the time. So you just dispatch these characters in 20 hours, they come back, and then they give you some rewards here. So that's a nice passive way of just saying, hey, let me send these characters off. I'm going to go eat lunch, sleep, go to work, come back, and hey, there's free stuff waiting for me. So the assignments are a good way to get free stuff. One last tip I have for everyone here is to go to your map. And one really good thing about this game that I like over other games is that it has this up here. For anyone who's played JRPGs and they have a finite amount of treasure chests, one of the worst things to do in those games is to run around looking for guides, going on YouTube, figuring out where are all these treasure chests. The game does a nice thing for you and tells you per map, so this is one map, how many treasure chests are on there and how many you are missing. So in this case, from this map, I am missing only two chests, meaning that once I find those two, I really don't have to explore again. But it is really nice, it's really convenient, because one of the things I hated about other games is, again, just running around thinking, where is this chest? I can't find it. I need pictures on YouTube. So this is a nice final addition to this game where it can simplify your life ever, ever, ever so slightly. One last piece of advice I have is honestly, just enjoy the game. I think it's a wonderful game. It combines a lot of the greatest aspects of other games like Persona, Final Fantasy, Star Ocean, Genshin Impact. It combines all those great things and makes a fantastic summarized game with I think the biggest downside in my opinion is that if it's anything like Genshin, I'm going to be 87 by the time this game is over. So enjoy the game to the fullest. It's really fun. I think the character design looks awesome. I think the clothes look awesome. I love the whole space traveling thing that they got going on here. And again, there's a lot of free stuff that they give you. So there is a good way to enjoy the game for free. And even if you're a little bit of a pay to play player, I'm sure you're enjoying the game as well. So with that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to answer when I have the time. If I've missed anything on this guide, feel free to let me know in the comments below because if there are enough comments of things that I miss, I will make a second beginner's tutorial. I just wanted to get this one out as early as possible because I know they had the whole travel thing this weekend, so that way people can hop on, get this advice right away, and just start rolling. But that is all for now. If you'd like to join my Discord, the link is right down there in that yellow box. Just type that into your URL and you should be good to go. Show me your summons. Show me your warps. What is your favorite part about the game? I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on it in the tab in that Discord right there. 
But that is all for now. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, until next time, take it easy.